uh, discuss about the before uh, going to selenium or automation or any other tool uh, even if it is a performance testing also like uh, before getting it to all the tools first uh, like you know if we understand uh, what exactly the testing is and why we need testing is like you know what to test and how to test and all if we understand i think uh, it will be like you know more clear for us to go with the tools and uh, we can use the tools okay so uh, today what okay. we will do we will try to discuss about uh, what exactly software uh, testing is and uh, why we need software testing mm -hmm. and how to test the software okay so uh, before uh, like you know exactly getting into uh, what exactly software testing is so uh, there is like you know uh, a process of uh, sdlc we call it as sdlc software development life cycle okay so sdlc means uh, software uh, development life cycle so okay. so before like you know going to this software testing so we should understand what exactly software development life cycle is okay so software testing is one of the phase of sdlc okay so uh, i like like you know i'll try to explain what exactly software development life cycle so that i go to some uh, point okay so here what happens is like say for example uh, uh, if i can tell you a uh, simple example say for example uh, one bank is there so they are doing all their transaction in paper or like you know whatever uh, whatever uh, in general scenario whatever we do paper work right so we will do some kind of earlier what was the issue say for example if it is a school join so if you want to join uh, one uh, one student to a school so earlier what was happening is like uh, so they used to like you know register uh, the student name and uh, details and everything into one book uh, register book so then they will admit uh, that the student in, into that uh, school right they will admit that uh, student into that school so this paperwork is like you know when uh, when we like you know we are moving towards the digitalization and all so this paperwork and all will go into be reduced so it is already redu uh, reduced a lot okay so this paperwork will be re reduced and uh, like you know nowadays like you know uh, automating the process okay so all this uh, handling the school management not only registering the students say for example like you know if uh, like you know first year it got passed and what is the like you know progress card progress of the student many things will be there in school right so uh, uh, from the beginning of uh, joining the students and each and every con uh, like you know conduct like uh, the tests and uh, semesters and exams and results and uh, when it comes to the school management itself how many staffs are there and uh, like you know which staff is on leave today so many things will be there inside the school okay uh, staff management okay. and the student management so then after student management exam management will be there okay. so these are many things will be there in the school so earlier what was happening is like all the things were like you know done using the paper they used to write it in uh, some book and they will register everything uh, and like you know about the students and about the exams results staff management and everything they used to do paperwork it is a kind of a manual work okay manually they have to write uh, manually they have to write uh, everything and they have to note down uh, that and all was happening okay so nowadays what uh, uh, happens is like uh, so this uh, school okay so let us consider this is a school so say for example it is on abc school okay so it like you know this school uh, is like you know uh, in order to get rid of this paperwork they will go to some software company okay so many companies are there uh, so they will go to one uh, say for example many service based companies are there so they will reach out one uh, software in the software company okay. okay so uh when it they, when they this school reaches to software company so this school like you know management tells to this company is like uh, so we have this this many things uh, we are doing paper work for student management exam management staff management you know, multiple things will be there so what we need is like uh, we want one software 
to manage all these things okay so we no need to do any paperwork kind of a thing so like you know build one software so that we can manage all our things in the software okay so we we no need to do any paperwork so everything software should handle like that so this abc company will approach to the software company so this software company what this software company will do is like say for example this is the software company okay so let us assume this is the school so the school people like you know went to this uh, software company along with the requirements what all the things uh, they wanted to like you know manage uh, into a software so what software company will do so they will first analyze all these things so what all like you know the things which are which this school is handling right so the management things what all the things they have mentioned right so this software company will analyze all the yeah. requirements okay so once after analyzing all the requirements they will build an application okay so in order to handle all these modules they will build a software and they will like you know they will give it through the customer okay so in this case school is the customer com like you know company is a vendor this school is a customer okay Cust school is a customer for this company abc company okay hmm. so okay. company acts as a vendor so it will uh, provide this uh, software to this particular school so that they can manage all their like you know uh, the whole management in the software so this is what exactly software communication happens okay so this is how the software will be built and given to the customer so this building the whenever they get this kind of a requirement in order to build an application so in order to like you know give it to the customer this software development should go into the process okay so this is not a single step like you know they will take the take, take the requirements and they will like you know next day they will build the application and next day they will give the uh, application to the customer it will not happens like that okay so this is what this is where we will come across sdlc software development life cycle so the moment when they receive the requirements so then this software development life cycle comes into the picture so this is a step by step procedure or step by step like you know process in order to develop the software and in order to like you know given to the customer so till from the like you know requirement gathering to delivering the feature to the customer so this has to go through so many phases so this is what we call it as sdlc okay so i okay. like you know come to uh, the step by step uh, process of sdlc okay sdlc so first what happens is like uh, gathering the requirements so after that uh, like you know what they will uh, do is like and understand the requirement so it is not like uh, you know uh, once after gathering the requirement so as a company we should understand the requirement as well right so without understanding we cannot build a better uh, application for the customer right so first of once after gathering the requirement uh, we should understand what the exactly they are asking and how we have to build it so basically uh, they will try to understand what exactly they are doing and what exactly we need to build like that they will understand okay so then comes uh, like you know design part design okay so once after gathering the requirement from the customer and understanding the requirements uh, thoroughly so then comes designing phase so designing phase if i can tell you in simple words so this architect will be there right so in every company architect will be there like you know uh, they will plan how this software should work each and every module and where exactly this module should be present and this module where it should be present how this module should work and what all the things should be there in this module and uh, like you know each and every connection between the these two things and what are the technologies we need to use and uh, back end what we have to use front end what we have to use language what we have to use and uh, how exactly each page should behave and uh, like you know how many things should be there how many pages are there everything they will plan here okay so design and okay. like you know here planning will happen planning uh, they will do like you know certain kind of planning okay 
so once after planning it will reach to dev team so dev team is nothing but a development team so once after this design uh, is done so in this design it is not like you know uh, it should work like this like this it will not be like this so in this particular design document everything each and everything will be mentioned even from high level design to low level design so low level design if i can give you an example say for example uh, if i go to this uh, some uh, website say for example amazon amazon dot in for go so how each and every button should work okay say for example uh, if we have one search button right so how this search should be implemented how this search button should work uh, like that e even in this level also the implementation and planning will be done okay so it is not like uh, only this is the application or this many modules will be there and this many modules should work like this like this it will not be like that even from like you know planning level uh, where this uh, search button should be placed and how this search should work and how the where this icon should be placed like that uh, every planning will be done okay so once after planning they will like you know allocate uh, some developers to that particular planning and then they will give it for uh, like you know development team so what development team will do okay so they will go through this design document and they will like you know they will be knowing how uh, what exactly like you know uh, coding and all program and all they will be knowing and they will start uh, like you know implementing all these things uh, one by one okay so they will allocate some uh, dev team and uh, dev team starts working on that once uh, like you know here like you know development happens okay once this uh, development uh, happens then they will like you know submit for testing okay so then comes the next phase is testing okay so then uh, in this particular phase uh, exactly uh, we are testing the application okay so development mm -hmm. once after development they will like you know given that build our application to the testing team so then testing team will do this is this itself is one more concept i'll explain you first i'll complete sdlc so in this phase we will do a uh, lot of testing uh, functional testing non functional testing many things we will do okay so once after testing mm -hmm. uh, once after like you know functionality wise it is fine it's fine so then like you know we will deploy the feature to production okay so once we deployed all this application to production so then we will give it to the customer the end user okay so we will give that okay. uh, complete feature to this particular customer then they will start using it okay so from mm -hmm. gathering the requirement to analyzing the requirement and planning the requirement and implementing the requirement and testing the uh, feature and uh, like you know deploying the feature and given to the customer so this is what we call it as software development life cycle okay so it has to go through each and every phase so then it will be implemented and it will be given to the customer so as part of as we are a tester as part of testing we have to concentrate on this particular phase okay so uh, we should okay. be aware of all these things but as we are a tester we, our like you know main uh, objective is to do the testing of this particular uh, feature, feature or an application right so that we will like you know understand what is uh, testing okay so this testing is having a separate thing called software testing life cycle okay so this this testing itself is a process again so inside sdlc itself is a process inside that testing is one phase so this testing itself is one more process it is not like they have given the application we are just like you know simply checking uh, we are given giving that giving that to the customer it is not like that so in testing also we do many things in testing what we will do first we will analyze the requirement okay so first we will uh, the whatever the requirement they have given by the customer right so we will uh, like you know understand the requirement so then we will uh, like you know understand the design so these two things we will review 
first we will understand the requirement what exactly the customer requirements then we will like you know go through the what are the design plans made so then what we will do uh, we will like you know plan the testing uh, test plan we will create so then uh, we will create a test uh, scenarios so then we will uh, like you know create uh, test cases so then after getting uh, the application and once after like you know dev team submit that application to the testing we will execute all the like you know test cases against uh, the application okay so here like you know many things can happen issues will be there in the application we will like you know test and we will break the application and we will find the defects and uh, we will report those uh, defects to defects to the dev team and dev team will fix those issues and we will like you know retest those uh, issues whether it is fixed or not like that once after everything is fine uh, like you know we will uh, uh, do like you know close the like you know task or application then we will give it for uh, deployment okay so until and unless it is closed from testing team we cannot deploy the feature or an application to the customer because uh, like you know what exactly testing is so now we understand uh, the what what exactly the software testing life cycle and what all will be there in the testing uh, life cycle okay so first of all we like you know we'll try to understand what exactly testing is why we need it why we have to test the application okay say for example i'll tell you one thing okay Say for example, uh, I have some amount of money. Okay, so if I I I want mm -hmm. to buy some kind of a laptop or gadget, whatever it is, so uh, I have given the money and I have purchased a uh, uh, laptop. Okay, say for example, if it is not working, uh, say for example, these many features are there in the laptop and I have given some money to uh, and we I like we purchase the laptop. Uh, if it is not working, then why I should buy? Right, correct. So if it yeah. is working, then only it is useful for me. We no need to buy. Otherwise, we no need to buy, right? So the thing is, the functionality of an application or a product or whatever it is, it should be working fine. Otherwise, we will get frustrated, right? Customer will get frustrated. So the thing is, yes, if any product or any application or anything, if it is working as expected. then only it will be helpful for the customer correct so that is the reason software testing is very important whereas in the case of software development life cycle so what exactly the testing is like so like uh, here uh, we will uh, as per my knowledge so i can define the testing is like uh, testing is like you know uh, ensuring overall functionality of the application so like you know testing is uh, ensuring uh, overall the functionality of that particular application is working as per the customer requirements correct so the thing is functionality will work fine but it should work as per the customer requirements right so customer has given some requirements it should work according to the requirements so here what we have to do we have to ensure that the functionality of an application is working as per the customer requirement or not and we have to maintain the quality in order to deliver the quality of the product so why testing is required is like so what exactly we do testing is like so in order to ensure the functionality of an application as per the customer requirement or not like that this overall functionality verification is uh, like mean, i mean it is called as testing okay so why we need testing is like so in order to deliver the quality product to the customer if we deliver quality product to the customer so that uh, the, uh, the customer will be happy right so that basic thing is 
whatever they have given the requirements if it is working according to the requirement then that is what uh, as a qa uh, that is what the ultimate job it should work according to the customer requirement so that is what exactly the testing means so inside this functionality testing we have many kinds of the testing okay so that we will discuss now we have many kinds of a testing okay so yeah. one is uh, like you know smoke testing mm -hmm. so then comes the functional yeah. testing yeah. then comes uh, integration testing uh, then comes uh, integration testing there we have one more thing called uh, retesting after that uh, regression testing after that uh, exploratory testing we have then uh, ad hoc testing we have then like you know uh, these are uh, like you know functional testing so inside the testing we have two types of testing okay. so one is functional testing and uh, non functional testing so there are two types of testing so testing uh, also we call it as uh, black box testing so i'll just try to explain one more concept here so usually what happens is that whenever the developer build uh, like you know application so they will also do some kind of a testing okay so here they will do some kind of uh, unit testing that we call it as unit testing okay so here what happens is that like, developer has written so many uh, codes right there will be so many files will be there in order to uh, build a feature or an application they have written so many lines of code so what they will do is like as part of unit testing they will provide some input to the code so uh, they will like you know execute the code and if it is uh, written in the uh, accurate results as per the input they have given uh, uh, they will conclude that the functionality of the code is working fine so they will test in that angle okay so and one more thing what they will test is like uh, inside the feature there will be many feature will be connected right so say for example if it is one feature and if it is another feature there will be connectivity between one module to another module basically this feature is nothing but a class there will be a relation between one class to another class right so if i can talk in more programming language uh, like java so each and everything is a class so in order to work uh, in order to flow the data from one module to another module one class to another class so that is what we call it as integration between the modules so they will test that data flow is happening fine or not then one more concept called integration test so they will check uh, the data flow between one feature to another feature that is called as uh, the integration testing and unit testing is like uh, they will check like whether the code is behaving as expected or not so this we call it as a uh, white box testing why white box testing is like right? i will tell you okay so why they will call it as white box testing is like right? because they are able to see the code whatever the code they have written right whatever uh, java code or c sharp code or dot net code in whichever the language they have written they are able to see the code they are able like you know they can access that those files and they can see the code so that is the reason it is called as white box testing as part of developer they will do only unit testing this unit testing in the sense is like um, testing the piece of uh, program whatever they have written whether it is working as per the expected or not whether it is producing the result uh, uh, with respect to the uh, inputs given inputs whatever the inputs we have given so it should uh, produce the results according to the inputs right so that is what we call it as uh, white box testing and unit testing integration 
validation testing is like data flow between one module to another module there is it so that is what we call it as integration testing so this is white box testing developer will do once after white box testing is done and it is working as expected then they will submit it for testing so then comes this complete concept testing concept and the testing concept is also called as a black box testing why it is called as it is not black it is black so it is black box testing okay so why we call this as a black box testing is like so we are not able to see the code as a qa we are not able to see the code and we will not be having access to the code files so that is the reason uh, we are calling it as black box testing so inside this black box testing we have two kinds of testing one is functional testing and another one is non functional testing so when it comes to functional testing these are the testing uh, we usually perform apart from this also we have many things but usually these things are the functional testing uh, types okay so then comes non functional testing so inside the non functional testing we have like you know uh, many things say for example performance uh, testing then comes uh, security testing then comes uh, compatibility testing so like this we have many non functional testing actually so what exactly functional testing and non functional so functional Sorry, testing uh, is nothing but no testing in our system hello hello Uh, yeah like load testing endurance testing everything comes in the non functional only right yeah yeah load testing the uh, test uh, like you know stress testing and uh, yeah. endurance testing and and uh, volume testing uh, spike and testing yeah and uh, endurance right Ah, uh, endurance. Yeah, like this. Ah, uh, we have so many testing. What, what, what is one more thing? Spike testing. Okay, okay. So like that, ah, uh, we we do have many kinds of uh, non-functional testing as well, functional testing as well. Okay. So what usually happens is, ah, uh, inside this functional testing, we will concentrate about the functionality. of the application say for example if we have one button that button should work fine if it is a input field it should take the input okay if it is like you know a listing page it should list the records in that page for that we will apply all this uh, testing uh, techniques so i will tell you one by one uh, when and all we will be doing this kind of testing and all so then comes uh, the non functional testing is like you know how our application is uh, behaving so when it comes to performance testing like you know say for example if 100 users hits the server what happens what is the load uh, is like you know thing on the server and how my server is behaving and like you know when it comes to security as part of security whether my application is working fine or not So, like you know, if any hackers are uh, able to access my application or not, so that the uh, nowadays, like you know, this is one more important thing is like the aspect of security. It is very very important. The security of the application should be maintained in such a way that they should not be able to hack anywhere. Okay, so that is the reason uh, every application nowadays they are moving it into the cloud. Okay, so we do have a like you know uh, something called cloud technology nowadays. so everybody is moving their application to the cloud platform because of uh, performance reasons and security reasons and many other reasons so compatibility testing is nothing but uh, uh, how my application is behaving in different platforms and different browsers and all so we will like you know before getting into this kind of a testing we will just try to like you know understand uh, before executing the like you know this phase is called testing phase before this we have many things right test plan test scenarios test case writing and all 
so that we will like you know try to understand what is test scenario and test cases and all okay so then we will come back to the testing so first of all we should be knowing what is test case and what is like you know uh, the test scenarios and test cases how to write test cases and all if you know then like you know easily we can try to understand uh, this kind of a testing say for example uh, let us assume uh, this is one application uh, this is built in uh, like you know they have built and given it for testing okay so now uh, what user will do user will log into this application and then they will start using it right so that is how and that is where exactly the testing comes in the picture before delivering uh, the feature to the customer we should make sure that each and every functionality of each and every feature should work fine so that is the ultimate thing actually so for that we have to write uh, test plan and test scenarios and we have to write test cases okay so first of all like you know we'll try to understand what is test case okay so inside this test case okay. uh, so what we used to do is like uh, there will be like you know as soon as uh, we understand the requirement and uh, design plan uh, we will define some kind of uh, scenarios test scenarios are nothing but uh, like you know it is one line thing which states that uh, this is the flow say for example uh, in this amazon.com so there is one product i will like you know if i can search one product called uh, iphone 14 say for example iphone 14 i search it okay. say for example if i want to add it to the cart okay what i have to do is like i have to click on add to cart okay so this is called one scenario so I have to search one product, I have to like you know add the product to the card. So this is a scenario basically. So in order to achieve this scenario, we have to like write test cases. Test cases are nothing but like you know step by step. So test case is nothing but it's a like you know kind of a step by step procedure how we are going to achieve that say for example in order to do these things first we should uh, like you know open this url then we should uh, log into this particular page so then we have to search that uh, iphone 14 so then we have to like you know here it is listed in records so in this records we have to go to one particular product so then we have to like you know read all uh, things and if you like you know like this product then we have to like you know click on add to card so what it will do is like it will add to card so then we have to like you know go back and uh, check our card whether this product is added to the cart or not correct yeah. Here we have so here this card option is there if you go to this card whatever we have added it should list over there, right so that is the thing making sure from login to till that cart is added successfully and checking that whether this is available in the cart or not till here we have to write each and every step correct so this like this many mm -hmm. test cases we can write okay so many things we can do many test cases we have to write not only add to cart each and every feature is there for each and every feature how it should work uh, based on the design doc and uh, requirement we will try to like you know do the testing right so like that we have to write the test cases for each and every module and each and every sub module and integration between one uh, feature to another feature that and all we will define okay so this is a basic uh, thing about the test cases so when it comes to the testing we will write you you understood right uh, the test cases how to write so if you can google it i will show yeah, you yeah. The test case template. Test case, uh, yeah. okay. so if i can google it 
I can show you one test case how it looks like. So, uh, like you know, exactly like you know, this is how it looks. Uh, the test case uh, template. We have to write uh, for each and every feature. We have to write uh, the test cases, and we have to track the results. So, for example, in the test case uh, step, we will write what is the test case is all about. So, for example, my test case is uh, about adding that one product to the cart. So in order to achieve that, what are the things we have to do? Steps, test case steps. First, we have to log into the application. Then we have to search the application. Then we have to like you know open that particular product. Then we have to click on Add to Cart. So then we have to make sure that it is available or not. So then, what is the status of each and every like you know test case steps? What is the expected results and actual results? Expected result is what? So the moment when I log in, it should log into the application. The moment when we like you know search the product, it should like you know it should be able to list the product. So then once I click on add to cart, it should be able to add to cart. So during this process, we will like you know uh, get many issues. Okay. So the basic thing of testing is breaking the application and uh, like you know finding the more and more defects and fixing those issues will be actually the uh, testing process. Okay. So it is not like uh, this. In Inside okay. this Amazon, we are not able to find any issues. It is not like that because it is already tested and it is already delivered. So as soon as we get a fresh build or a fresh application or a fresh feature, so when they submit it for testing, we will find lot number of issues. Okay. So uh, it it is not like uh, it is mm -hmm. not looks like exactly what we are using all these uh, already tested applications. So if you Uh, start testing the fresh application which is not uh, delivered or which is not tested you will go through a lot of issues and you will get lot of issues so sometimes it will not even work sometimes the moment when i open this page itself the moment when i open this url itself the page is getting failed the moment when i click on this particular link the page is getting failed and it will not even this this all this feature so the moment when i click on this feature it will not even uh, show this kind of sub modules and Many things will be there. Each and every thing, yes, from my understanding, uh, testing requires uh, three to four things actually. So the one thing is understanding of the requirement. Uh, in, uh, so what what testing is required? So the very first thing is. Uh, understand the require so how well you understood the requirements so that is based on that your testing will go okay so the very first criteria to test an application thoroughly is you should understand the requirements properly so in the like you know during analyzing the requirements itself we have to clearly go go through each and every uh, the concept that they have mentioned in the, re the requirement documents along with the design plan so if you get any doubts you have to reach out to your manager or uh, your senior whoever you are assisting you right so you have to reach out to them you have to ask uh, uh, like you know what exactly this and how it should behave like that and all you have to ask the doubt itself while understanding the requirement while reviewing the requirement itself after that clear your doubts then go through uh, the remaining part of the requirements then first you have to understand the you should get the clear picture of what exactly customer is expecting and you should uh, review the design document also so in the design while reviewing these two things you will get to know the design document is uh, written exactly as per the customer requirements are not like that right so first you understand the requirement then you go through the design plan then you will get to know whether how this exactly application will looks and how this exactly application will behave so then there there itself we will get to know our application is going to behave as per the customer requirements or not okay so then once after uh, understanding the requirement uh, product knowledge is also required okay
say for example uh, in product based company if it is as, uh, there are two things uh, i'll explain in later say for example uh, if it is a product based company like that you think okay so in product based company product will be uh, constant and they will be adding new new feature to the already existing product so in this case what happens is like so understanding the requirement along with like you know product knowledge is also required because of this new feature it should not impact the old feature already available in the system because of that you should be aware of this product knowledge say for example uh, tomorrow if i am going to add this uh, whatever the uh, new requirements given by the customer uh, we are going to build that feature and we are going to uh, deliver that feature to the product so because of that it should not cause any issues to the already existing features so if we are aware of this product knowledge while testing itself you will test the new feature also you will test the already existing feature also so if we have this better understanding of the product so then by looking at this requirements itself you will tell where and all this feature is going to impact say for example earlier i was uh, explaining on uh, uh, the school example right so say for example student is ordered to uh, uh, what the software is already built and it is given to the customer like that uh, let us assume this is already built and it is given to the customer say for example tomorrow only like you know uh, earlier these two things were there okay so student management was there and uh, staff management was there like that you think so tomorrow what uh, uh, this abc school will do you will approach to the software company ask them to add one more management called uh, exam management so we no need to manage that exam uh, in manual paper or uh, paper work and all so we need to handle it that also in software so uh, key, like you know just add this exam management feature into the system also so if we have a better understanding of the old implementation the student management and staff management by looking at this exam management uh, feature and requirements you will get to know where exactly it will impact where it will impact definitely it will impact the student management right so because this exam yes. and results and everything is related to students it is not related to staff even though staff is uh, related but it is minimal not maximal uh, who like you know who is the invalid uh, like you know uh, uh, evaluator for which exam and what is the marks given by that in this letter and etc etc right so but it is mainly focusing on this student so which student is like you know passed this exam which is, uh, student is attended this exam which uh, like you know student got how many marks in which subject definitely this exam management feature is mainly focusing on the students by looking at this requirements by having already existing uh, understanding of the product so you can write a better test cases right so where and all it is going to improve yeah. affect this student management uh, because of adding this new feature so here we have to make sure this functionality of this feature as well as the functionality of the other two feature which are already available okay so that is what i told you when it comes to the testing overall functionality or end to end functionality end to end functionality we count as end to end functionality so when it comes to end to end functionality there are many things okay so i will come back to that uh, uh, later so now what i was telling so product knowledge okay so then some kind of uh, like you know uh, creative thinking is required So then like you know uh, what happens is like uh, sometimes uh, uh, testing is basically uh, a thinking okay uh, how like you know you can think about as possible scenarios how you are going to approach the testing how you are going to like you know uh, come up with new new scenarios it is not like uh, the test cases and testing uh, it will not be like you know even this kinds Uh, type of testing is common for all the testers but how we were going to test is like you know completely different from qa to qa it is based on thinking how we were going to think how you were like you know you were able to understand the feature or understand the product based on that you were thinking will go right so for that like you know a little bit of thinking is required and like you know some kind of uh, like you know uh, 
uh, that's it i guess some kind of common sense is also required for this uh, say for example i'll tell you one scenario uh, uh, i'll come back to this old uh, example okay so what what exactly is there uh, student management is there right so let us mm -hmm. assume uh, in the student management one page is there so where exactly the like you know our school staff is going to register the student okay so here we have so many fields and uh, like you know uh, student name is there uh, like you know student uh, parent details are there and uh, like you know many other details uh, like you know which uh, student uh, last career acad career i mean last academic details will be there and uh, like you know student address related things will be there okay so now let us assume this is an address section okay so here like you know student address will be mentioned so say for example we need to verify this address is proper or not say for example what if they entered invalid address right so we have to verify this address is uh, valid or not so for that we bought one uh, option to verify this address so on click of this on uh, say let us assume this is the button on click of this button so internally it has to verify this is the valid address or not okay so it will check like you know whether this address is really available or not so they should not provide some fake address right so for that we have provided one icon so this icon will internally verify whether this address is actually real uh, real address or not so sometimes what happens uh, staff the this school staff what they have what they did is like they entered some wrong address and then they click on this icon definitely it will fail right because this yeah. is an invalid address they entered and they clicked on this icon and uh, it got failed okay so now uh, this staff got to know that uh, i have entered some wrong address then they changed this address so after changing this address we should provide a reverification icon right yes. they should reverify the address correct so this is called com uh, mean common sense because in the requirement document what they will mention is like so i need one uh, icon or i need one mechanism to verify the address whether the address is uh, valid or not this is what the requirement they have given and this for this requirement they did the design document so what uh, in design document what they will mention bring one icon uh, near to this address field and based the moment when they click on this address it should verify this address whether this is correct address or not like that they will uh, do this kind of a design document correct so you will review the requirement and design document both are matching matching so this is fine this is fine based on this you will write a test cases so what like you know uh, you will verify you will absolutely will go and you will test for valid address and invalid address you will test for valid address it will fail and invalid address it will uh, for valid address it will pass and invalid address it will fail so this is not the complete testing right even though as per your test case it is complete testing but here some kind of thinking is required what if uh, the uh, staff or whoever if they enter invalid address it will fail so tomorrow if they want to change the address there should be an option they will change the address after changing the address again they have to reverify this address right this will be missed out of the requirements this will be missed out of the design document as a qa we should think to think this some kind of common sense and understanding uh, uh, i mean creative thinking many things required so that is how i mentioned here some kind of uh, thinking is required okay so these are things are uh, like you know very much uh, required uh, for testing okay so now so we will come to this concept what is uh, smoke testing and uh, uh, like you know i am not going to uh, discuss uh, uh, very in, de in depth so we will like you know move a little bit uh, fast about like you know this concept okay so uh, uh, if you want like you know we can do it like uh, in detail testing if you required you let me know okay explain sure okay so smoke testing what uh, definition says is like so verify verifying the basic and critical functionality of an application basic and critical Application. Okay. So here, what we will do, we are not going to test uh, the 
the complete thing okay so here what we will do we will verify certain basic and critical feature of the application if basic and critical uh, feature of the application is working fine then it is fine so what exactly basic and critical feature okay so i open this uh, particular amazon page right so the moment when i open this url this page should load that is one uh, basic uh, criteria right if page itself is not uh, loading then uh, we are not going to test we are not able to test right so that is first yeah. thing the moment when i open this url the page should load the moment when i search something and click on enter the result should be shown this is one basic criteria okay so then the search should work fine then that auto cart is one uh, one more basic uh, criteria and uh, critical cri critical critical criteria is the moment when i open the url they should load that is the critical thing okay so the basic thing is like search should work fine and clicking on this button should work fine and like you know uh, clicking on some link should work fine so like that many things should be there okay then comes functional testing so this is where exactly the each and every in detail testing will goes on okay smoke testing uh, usually what happens uh, i'll tell you uh, once they do this black box uh, testing and they will submit for testing so we should accept that application for complete testing right so in that case we will do some kind of smoke testing we will verify some basic and critical features if it is working then accept it for testing the moment when i open this url this page itself is not loading then what is the point of accepting this application for the testing there is no point of accepting it right then we will send back to this particular application to dev team so the, the moment when i open this url this page itself is not loading please uh, like you know recheck and resubmit for testing okay mm -hmm. so like this that testing we will get to know in the smoke testing okay, okay. we will verify mm -hmm. some basic uh, functionality and critical functionality of the application if those are working fine so then we will accept it for testing so then we will go for functional test so in this functional testing we will verify the functionality of the feature so we will verify the each and every in detail testing will goes into this particular module okay so here we will verify each and every button uh, if they specify if it is a login phase uh, we will try with uh, valid credentials and invalid credentials uh, say for example uh, one login page i open so in order for like you know, better understand it for example this is an application now when i open this url this login page will load okay so here username and password is there the moment when i send these two input fields and click on login it will take us to the home page so if i want to write the test cases for this particular page what all i can write so if i login with valid credentials valid username and valid password and click on login should take us to the home page if i am mm -hmm. trying with invalid username uh plus valid password it should not if invalid yeah. password with valid username also it should not if username is also invalid and password is also invalid it should not if like you know username uh, they will specify what username should accepts right so some in some of the application username will be our gmail id in some application username will be like you know like this uh kind of like you know uh, an alpha numeric and password will be whatever the password we generate but for this application they it's like you know they have given this kind of username and password so this this is fine but uh, generally what happens uh, in real time is like uh, most of the times username will be looks like you email id okay and uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, like username whatever we can we want to create so that will be the username so whatever we created that username it should accept if it is an email id only email format it should accept so apart from if it is an email id if i pass 1 2 3 4 it should not accept it should not allow us us to enter that details only if it is in proper format it should accept so like this all possible things you will check and if that is working fine so then uh, this functionality will be fine then we will conclude that all possible scenarios okay 
so it is not like one possible scenario it is not like uh, one or two scenarios we try uh, it is allowed us to log in it is not like that each and every possibility we have to think first we have to try with valid credentials then we have to try with invalid credentials in invalid also combination uh, valid username uh, invalid password invalid username uh, valid password both are invalid and without uh, entering the fields if i click we should not like that it is based on uh, thinking okay so like that okay. if i uh, give wrong credentials it should not work all the possible scenarios we will uh, write it down in test cases then we will execute one by one so that testing will go on here functional testing so then comes integration testing say for example integration testing we have already like you know i think uh, we have already spoke and just try to understand say for example exam uh, year student module is there exam module is there so as soon as uh, we exam is done and results results are published uh, for a student for every student's results will be there right so we can think that which student got which uh, like you know marks so the student uh, management is related to exam right so in the yes, result uh, list what we will show which student got which marks and uh, in which which subject so many marks he got like that we will show so there is a relation between student uh, management to exam management so then if i open one student profile uh, inside the student profile we will show the results right so where these results are coming from uh, definitely it is coming from exam management hello. right yeah hello hello can you hear me hello hello yeah can you hear me hello hello yeah yeah can, yeah, you, can you hear it yeah yeah so i was discussing about uh, these things right like uh, so if i open one student management page the like you know uh, the results of that particular students will be displayed right so where those results are coming from it is coming from uh, exam management right so the data flow from exam management to the student profile verifying uh, if i want to understand like you know uh, more better way say for example i am searching on uh, uh, like you know in this search box i'll test iphone 14 okay so i'll search one uh, product so it will Hello? list that actually your voice is breaking yeah one second i will maybe you have to let's soon set the internet my network is not there i'll change the internet connection Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking now. Okay. So, for example, uh, we are talking about uh, integration testing. Right? See, yes. uh, one more thing you understood. Uh, this is also one issue. You were able to mm -hmm. see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see. See uh, how it is looking. This is not uh, like you know uh, the correct way of uh, looking the application, right? The look and feel of the application is not correct, right? so this because of internet fluctuation it happened so after connecting it to proper internet this page should uh, like you know refresh and it should display the see this is what the actual look and feel of the application yeah the earlier what was it was looking that was the issue we have to report mm -hmm. this issue to the developer and get that fixed okay so this is one thing and uh, i was talking about integration just now say for example i'll search one product from here Okay. So this is the product. So for example, this is the product. 
So I want to add this product to the cart. Okay. So I click the add cart and uh, it is added to cart successfully. Here it is showed right icon added to cart. Okay. This is one part, but this should list in the cart space, right? If I go to this cart, this result should list in this particular page, right? Mm -hmm. The data flow from that module to this module is called as an integration testing. Okay. okay. So the data is flowing from that module to this module. So this search page from here adding to the cart is one module. This page is one module. And this page is another module. This is the cart page. So if I add that product from that particular page, that should list in this particular page. So the data is flowing from that particular page to this page. So this is what we call it as an integration testing. So integration testing is nothing but uh, like you know checking the data flow. Okay. Okay. So then comes retesting. Okay. So while doing these kinds of testing, functional testing or like you know integration testing, we will come up with uh, issues, right? So the no application will be 100% perfect. Every application will be having uh, some kind of an issues. Okay. So whenever mm -hmm. we are doing uh, these uh, issues, uh, if it is the application or feature is not working as per the customer requirements or if it is not behaving as per as expected, so then that is an issue and uh, that we will post it as an uh, issue in uh, if we have tools to track the issues. Uh, bug tracker is there, bugzilla is there, many tools are there. So generally like you know, we will report that issue in that particular uh, software. We will take that uh, screenshot and we will write uh, the description like you know, we are not able to say for example, if we add that product to the cart, so it, if it is not listing in the cart uh, page, so then that is an issue. And we will write like you know, uh, when we search the product and if we click on add to cart, in the auto card page it is showing the auto card successfully but in card space that product is not listed so that is the issue and that this detailed description we will write and we will attach the screenshot and we will like you know assign that to the respective developer who implemented this feature and we will um, raise the issue like that we will raise the issues uh, developer what developer will do they will review that issue and they will uh, review the code and they will fix that issue once after fixing that issue, they will push that uh, fix to the uh, QA environment. There we have to verify that fix, right? Whether if they tell like it is fixed, how can we, how can we like, you know, um, believe that it is fixed by like, you know, verifying that we will like, you know, come to know that it is fixed, right? So the mm -hmm. again, we have to go and we have to verify that scenario. Then only we'll get to know it is fixed. So if, if developer simply says that it is fixed, we cannot believe that. We have to go and we have to verify that. We have to re-verify mm -hmm. that scenario. If it is going fine, then fine. So that is what we call it as retesting. Okay. So retesting is not only when it comes to bug fixing. Okay. So many times we do retesting. Retesting is like, you know, uh, testing the functionality or uh, the feature testing the functionality or the bug fix is called uh, not functionality uh, yeah for bug fix uh, like you know multiple times is called retesting okay. is called uh, like you know retesting okay so then comes uh, regression testing okay so uh, what happens is like uh, uh, let us assume uh, that uh, uh, let us go back to our old example so say for example let us assume uh, one more uh, uh, feature we have to add to this particular uh, application okay already one uh, abc school is there for that uh, already three modules are there we have to add one more module called uh, uh, um, what will add um, um, yeah for example billing we will add okay 
So the students has to pay the bills, right? For every year they have to like you know they have to pay that uh, fees. Uh, that fees calculation billing model will be there, correct? So that we uh -huh. have added this billing model newly. We have added and we have tested. It is working fine. And the integration also we tested. Uh, it is working fine. Everything is fine. But one more testing is there that because of this uh, introducing this new feature, it should not. Impact the existing modules of the application. Correct. Yes. Because of adding this uh, new feature, it should not cause any issues to the old features. It should work fine as it was earlier. How it was working earlier? These three modules like that only it should work fine along with this feature. So making uh -huh. sure that all these features are working fine or not, that is what we call it as regression testing. Understood. The old feature functionality because of the new feature. Okay, so old feature should not like you know uh, implement. I mean, old feature should not uh, like you know it should work as it was earlier because of like you know introducing the new feature. It should not cause uh, any issues. To ensure all features functionality should not be impacted because of the new condition. So it is basically like uh, ensuring that all feature functionality. Okay. So then okay. comes uh, exploratory testing and lot of testing. Okay. So exploratory testing is uh, a different kind of a thing. Uh, it will be like you know uh, there is already one uh, feature available in the system, okay. But we do not have any design document or we do not have any uh, requirements for that. So then we have to do some kind of like, we have to explore that feature and we have to analyze that feature. So then we will like you know uh, we'll get to know what exactly the functionality of that particular application. So that is what uh, the exploratory testing is. So the exploratory testing is where we do not have any kind of uh, uh, the design document or requirements. So there, in order to understand how the feature is behaving, then we will do exploratory testing. So then comes ad hoc testing. So ad hoc testing is kind of an informal testing. Uh, basically, it is also called as a monkey testing. So this is also called as a creative testing. Say for example, uh, sometimes issues will be there in the software. Okay. So that we are not able to replicate with these kinds of uh, testing. Okay. With all these kinds of a testing, that issue is not able to replicate. So then we need some kind of an ad hoc testing. So trying some different scenarios. Uh, uh, this we saw right. So like you know, turn, changing the internet fluctuate, uh, changing the internet will cause the issues in this particular place, right? So that issue mm -hmm. will not happen uh, generally when internet connection is proper. So that issue will not come, right? Whatever we have seen this uh, phase, right? Mm -hmm. So that issue will not happen generally. That issue happens uh, like you know some very rare cases. So what if uh, say for example today I got that issue I reported that issue to Amazon, okay? So Amazon people, Amazon testers will test that uh, application, but they will not get that issue, correct? Because their internet connection mm -hmm. will be proper and everything will be proper. So they will do smoke testing and they will do functional testing, they will do integration testing, they will do regression testing, they will do retesting. Every testing they will do, but they will not get that issue. The one who thinks creative, the one who thinks this kind of a thing uh, will change the internet connection and will try uh, refreshing the page whether it is happening or not. That is what we call it as uh, a kind of a creative thinking and uh, do some kind of uh, ad hoc testing, then they will get the issue. Otherwise, they will mm -hmm. not get to know the issue. So that is what we call it as ad hoc testing. Okay. So you've got to know that uh, uh, this concepts, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I got it. Okay. So then we have uh, like you know non-functional testing. 
So non-functional testing, uh, I'll just like you know uh, quickly explain this thing here itself. So the performance testing will be like you know uh, it will be like you know how my application is behaving uh, if thousand or ten thousand users hits my application whether my application is crashing or not or like you know my application is uh, like you know producing uh, the response as cust as per the customer response or not like that we will test okay so the time mm -hmm. uh, lagging how much time it is taking to response to the customer uh, if uh, the server is busy and uh, the traffic is more in the server then now my application is behaving to the end user so that is what uh, we do in testing load testing is basically like you know number of users hits the server how my server is behaving uh, this stress testing is if number of these two are uh, like you know kind of related things if more number of users hits the server how this uh, like you know behaving so then comes the security testing so the uh, as part of security testing say for example um, so this you are able to see right after the question mark we are able to see ref and uh, underscore equal to new card nev underscore card right are we yeah. able to understand this why they have mm -hmm. given in this way no right so this is an encrypted value so if you see here https uh, colon double slash www dot amazon dot in uh, like you know a slash gp uh, slash card uh, slash v uh, dot html this i can understand http is a protocol www dot amazon dot in is a domain and gp and cart in view dot html is a particular page mm. this i can understand but this i cannot understand why they have given this but internally this is having a valid value okay but we don't know as an end user i am not able to see this this is a, like you know kind of an encrypted format they are giving so if i can go back i'll show you one more thing see new items this thing is there see after the question mark am i able to understand like you know are we able to understand what these numbers are no we cannot because this is encrypted if the hacker sees this also they cannot add this they cannot decrypt this because the encrypted lo logic will be known by the respective the amazon team okay so that will not be like you know that we cannot see and that we cannot do anything so that is as part of security they did like this this should be encrypted okay so that is how the security things uh, comes into the picture and uh, when it comes to logging uh, password should not, should be like you know hidden they should not be able to see the password so like that so the security aspects many things are there so then uh, we will like, you know, go in depth in the coming classes okay. so then comes like you know compatibility testing so uh, the compatibility testing is basically uh, say for example my amazon application is uh, opened in this particular chrome browser right so do i have this uh, firefox okay so in this firefox i will open this browser how it looks like that we'll see okay so each and every browser to browser there will be a difference okay so that compatibility should be fine in every application every browser so user may use my amazon dot in any of the browsers right i am comfortable with the chrome uh, so that i am using uh, from so what if other user is comfortable with firefox then we'll use that application in firefox right so in firefox also my application should behave how uh, it is behaving in uh, chrome right. all the features should be available and all the features should work fine there should not be any issues so sometimes what happens is like uh, so the uh, application will be like you know built uh, for chrome but that will not be uh, you know uh, properly visible are properly working uh, in uh, firefox browser so that and all compatibilities are there say for example my application now i am opening this amazon dot in windows platform say for example tomorrow what if if user is using amazon dot in mac what if user is using in uh, linux there are so many platforms right so the, mm -hmm. the compa compatibility of that particular application in different platforms different browsers uh, testing that with different versions say if i come to chrome chrome itself is having so many versions right now the latest version may be like you know 
त्रिबल वन समथिंग Yeah, it is triple only. Okay, so there are so many versions of Chrome. Each and every version, whether my application is behaving fine or not. So I am having latest version. It is fine. Some uh, like you know users may have the older version also, right? So mm -hmm. it has to work for both the versions of, I mean all the versions of Chrome. Everywhere it should work fine. In all the like you know all the platforms, all the like you know versions. Inside the mobile, if I if I like you know what if. i am opening uh, this particular url through my laptop so if i am using this uh, url through my wave uh, if i open this uh, url from my mobile chrome browser there also it should work fine right so like that so there might be like you know many things so like this we will do if we are doing all these things manually called as manual testing if we are doing okay. all these things we call it as say for example clicking and entering all these fields manually and uh, like you know copy this value and uh, pass this value and click on login button and uh, like you know open this page and like you know click on this this is the dashboard page and uh, click on admin page okay so then like you know click on leave page so verifying these things manually opening the browser and uh, opening the url and uh, log into this particular page and go into any particular page and like you know performing any other actions even on uh, reset the search so anything whatever the test cases we will write right so all these things uh, <coughs> all the execution of the test cases manually is called as manual testing if i am doing it through some kind of a tool manual testing if i am doing all these kinds of a testing uh, manually is called as manual testing if i am doing all this uh, kind of uh, like you know so see uh, one more thing i have to uh, explain i will explain okay so by making use of uh, some tool if i do this all this kind of a testing called as automation why automation testing and what are the benefits of automation testing we will discuss later okay but mm -hmm. for now if i am doing it uh, manually it is called as manual testing if i am doing it like you know uh, through some kind of a tool available in the market in the market we have so many tools available in the market so if we are doing it through any kind of a tools uh, that will do automatically so we no need to enter this url in the browser we no need to provide uh, this username and password we no need to like you know click on this actions so you, we have to write all these things in in the programmatic way so then that program will take care of launching the browser and opening the url and entering the username and password and uh, like you know coming back and clicking in any, any test case we do right so that mm. uh, we have to write down in the programmatic way so then that program will take care of everything okay so we don't mm. no need to do uh, this uh, manually go and click on this manually go and verify that we don't no need to do it the program itself will do that okay so that is what we call it as automation testing okay so there yeah. are, this is what ui testing there are so many other things uh, when it comes to testing we have api testing okay so then we have database testing then uh, we have like you know performance testing So like this uh, security testing. Okay. So doing all those testing called as manual testing. If I am doing all those manual things uh, in using some tools called uh, like you know in the market we have Selenium, uh, we have Cypress, uh, we have uh, WebDriver, I know. Like there many tools are there. So if I am like you know doing automation testing using all this uh, uh, called web automation testing, okay. it is not only automation, it is web automation testing. Uh, you know right what is web? Web automation means whatever I am like you know opening in the browser is called as a web. Okay, so mm -hmm. that is what we call it as uh, web uh, application. Web yeah, web automation testing. 
So then comes APA. So I'll explain you the architecture of APA, where it comes and how it comes. The APA testing is basically like you know uh, done using some kind of tools called uh, like you know Postman and the rest is good. So like that. So database testing we will do like you know kind of uh, table verification, procedure verification, function verification, trigger verification, uh, database verification, whether whatever we passed from UI right. So that is storing in uh, database or not like that. Verification is database testing. Then we already know right performance testing. So performance, verifying the performance of an application is called as performance testing. And security part of uh, SQL injection many things are there. Uh, data be uh, like you know uh, uh, data security and uh, UI security verification of those things called security testing. Okay, so now where we are going to concentrate is right this thing web part of this one. So this manual testing is verifying all these things manually is called as manual testing and verifying mm -hmm. these things through some kind of a tool is called web part of this one. Okay, so tomorrow uh, in the next class we will discuss a uh, 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 little bit about uh, completely we will move towards automation. Okay, so you want to start that today, like you know, uh, yes, I understood.